paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. The Azure Blue Atlantic, at the foot of Mount Cameroon. Home to an extraordinary friendship, animal keeper Alfred Barmer and Nyango, a female gorilla. Nyango is very special. She's a cross-river gorilla, the rarest great ape in the world. Now, Barma wants to try and find Nyango's relatives in the wild. His search will take him through the forests of Cameroon, high up into the mountains. He will meet animals unique to this part of the world. But will he also find the shy gorillas? The Limbe Wildlife Centre in Cameroon is a rescue and rehabilitation station for orphan primates. Barma's mission is to give them the best life possible in captivity. The great apes accept the congenial keeper like no one else, almost as if he were one of their own. Yeah, <laughs> you. Friends. So gorillas are for me like my brothers. And they are my brothers. That's why I'm playing with them. He's playing. You see that they really love me. I mean, they are playing and they are very happy. I think my relationship with this gorilla is because all the time I spend all my time playing with them. So I mean, they always see me here every day, every day. So I'm, when I'm playing with them like this, they are so happy because they really love me and they trust me. Bama has worked at the Limbe Center for 15 years and has successfully raised many orphaned gorillas. Come, chop! Very good food. For Bama, the guided tours of the center have a particular significance. He gladly shares his knowledge of how each gorilla arrived here. Just living very free. Chella, for example, was found in a poacher's car with his dead mother. All 15 gorillas in Limbe have similar histories. Barma's stories fascinate the children and convince them to respect nature in Cameroon as he does. One small them, contribution to the gorillas' conservation. The gorilla, the most endangered species is because their number have actually dropped. Soon afterwards, Barma rejoins his animal charges. Cross river gorillas like Niango are the rarest of all great apes. Western lowland gorillas are much more common. A few days ago, the gorillas at Limbe welcomed a new addition to their group. Akiba gave birth to a baby. Proudly, she shows Barma her offspring. Baby. And she trusts me from small. So now she has a baby and she knows that I'm the only person that I can touch the baby. But she trusts me. Because I was taking care of her when she was very small, just like this baby also. So now that she has a baby, she allows me to touch it. Every day, there's plenty of TLC for Barma's favorite, Nyango. Mm. It all began with Nyango 15 years ago. 
Day by day, the trust between man and ape grew, blossoming into a unique friendship. What no one knew at the beginning was that Nyango is the only cross-river gorilla in captivity, a breed of great apes that had been presumed extinct. Come. Nyango is very special because, I mean, nobody knows where the family lives, and uh, she's, she's alone here in captivity, and uh, even though she's used to with the other Western lowland gorilla, but she's the only cross river, and uh, I don't even know where I can find the others. So I'm really trying to look forward to go to where Nyango's mother was killed to find out from the hunters and take them to where they killed Nyango's mother. If they can show me where the family can live. So I would really like to go to see the hunters and I will find out if we can see one of the Nyango's sisters and brothers in the forest. Weeks later, Bama's wish comes true and he takes leave of his village on the edge of town. The keeper sets off to find the last Cross River gorillas in the wild. The elders support his plan. With the village's blessing and a refreshing swig of palm wine, Barma starts out on his quest to find the rarest of the great apes. One last look back at Limbe, the lively fishing port on the Atlantic. With all the features that make Africa so endearing. Founded by a British missionary in June 1858, today Limbe has about 20,000 inhabitants. The influence of the former colonial rulers is still evident. Buying a ticket involves a certain amount of bureaucracy. Learn from the Germans, as the Cameroonians say. The country was a German colony from 1884 to 1916. Just outside Limbe, the landscape changes. Barma's thoughts are with the gorillas. Will he find Nyango's relatives alive, or are they already extinct? Barma is already familiar with the western lowland gorillas from his center. Cross River gorillas look very similar, but only live in the remote border region between Cameroon and Nigeria. This is where his search will begin. On his way through the west of the country, a local guides Barma through a forest off the beaten track. It's the first time Barma has left town for more than a few days. At the moment, he feels a bit lost in the countryside, but he is never alone. His friendly manner means he's welcomed everywhere. It's not long before he's surrounded by children. Typical Africa. Soon there's only one topic of conversation in the village. Gorillas. Bit by bit, Barma pieces together the information he needs. First, he hears of a healer who uses gorilla bones for traditional medicine. Thank you. Uh, okay, yeah. where can I find you? Yeah, next time again. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Perhaps this man will be able to give him a lead. You put down the baby. I will put the, the bone inside, inside and wash it like this. And it will be there for one month. They will take the water and wash the baby. Take the water and wash the baby. The baby will be very powerful. Like a gorilla? Yes. This cross river bone is also messing. It's very important because you use it to wash newborn babies. Really? Yes. Barma is skeptical. Yeah, I'm a really bit surprised really seeing the doctor using the gorilla bone to treat his patient. And I mean, it's amazing because I never, I, I, I'm really worried about it, but I mean, it's true. He's using this bone to treat patients. And now the patients are really getting improved by their word. I mean, they are not more sick because the bones works to treat their illness. So I mean, the doctor is really very serious because this bone helped to treat his patients. Back in the village, Barma's enthusiasm turns to sadness. On a wall hangs a gorilla skull, a symbol of a successful but senseless hunt. Barma's presence is not welcomed in all the villages. But it doesn't take long for the locals to thaw and Barma's openness encourages trust. The farmers tell of their hard life in the fields. Nevertheless, it strikes Barma that the people here are happier than the inhabitants of Limbe. It's no wonder, surrounded by such lush vegetation. Barmer's first impression is that the forest is relatively intact, but it's evident that many of the rarer species are missing. Most of the animals Barmer sees here are also to be found in Limbe. Here too, he sees flocks of grey parrots, the praying mantis, and the colourful locust, which can also be found living close to human habitation, on the edge of fields, or on fallow land. Barma is surprised to discover that this area is not nearly as peaceful as he thought. He comes upon a group of people working tirelessly under extreme conditions. But what are they doing here? Is it oil factory or what is it? The production of palm oil is spreading like wildfire. Here, it is for local consumption only but in other parts of the country, it is on a larger scale, supplying a growing international market. For Barma, this is all new. Does the oil production have an effect on the gorilla population? All along here, the whole forest, have, all the trees have been cut out and they have planted their palm trees to make their oil. So that is the only place you can get gorillas. So, but here, they cannot, you cannot have gorillas here, except in the reserve forest that the village people have reserved, only for the gorillas. I've also discovered here that the village people, they are very poor. That's why they leave their town and come into the forest to end their living uh, uh, and by planting this palm nut, the palm trees. Uh, and uh, if they don't uh, cut the forest to, pa to plant the palm trees, I mean, they might not have oil to feed their family or to send their children to school. And uh, they are telling me that this is the only way they can make a living because if they don't do like this, they might not have food. Barma recognizes that the people here are caught up in a vicious circle. 
the daily struggle for survival, environmental destruction, and the growing demand for natural resources. I'm really worried because this beautiful site has been seasoned from gorillas. It's human beings that they are using this site. I mean, I really feel bad because the people, they are even living right inside the forest. They are planting their palm trees and the felling tree. Even I heard a very big noise of a tree falling. And I heard people shouting inside. I mean, people are even living inside the forest. And now where are the gorillas? And I don't know where we can see those gorillas. They are all disappearing. Infinitely richer in wildlife are the few still intact rainforest areas of Cameroon. The highlands near the Nigerian border are inaccessible terrain for humans, with steep slopes making them virtually impenetrable. Here, species have developed that are unique to this area. Drills, for example, are only found on the borders of Cameroon and Nigeria. These gregarious monkeys live in clans of up to 50 animals. They're generally considered to be active by day but there are always exceptions. Like the gorillas, drills are badly affected by deforestation and hunting and are in danger of extinction. There are now only about 3,000 animals left in the wild. Matters are further complicated by the fact that drills produce only one offspring a year not many to ensure the survival of a whole species. With striking features and powerful jaws, the dominant male misses nothing and is ready at any time to protect his clan with a fight to the death if need be. It's clear that if there are any cross-river gorillas left, they will be in the last primeval forests. This is where Barma must look. His journey takes him westwards, ever deeper into the mountain forests near the border with Nigeria. There's no shortage of fresh water. Getting hold of information, however, is another matter. Now and again, Barma drops into one of the villages to ask about gorillas. The market is a perfect place for meeting people. Here, Barma discovers that this village is special. The people's traditional beliefs offer hope for the survival of the great apes. He gets to know a shaman, a key figure in the protection of Cross River gorillas in this area. The two men strike up conversation and the man invites Barma into his hut. Although Cross River gorillas are protected by law, instances of them being killed by poachers still occur. But not in this area. All oh, the kind mix in the so you only mix them, then yes. you put them for pot, the yes. knack and you put them for pot. Barma learns from the healer that people here have a tradition that forbids the hunting and eating of gorillas. Gorilla, not, not to do something. I have very an interesting story here about gorilla in this village. I mean, this local village, they believe on their traditional medicine and uh, 
the traditional medicine is not just a normal person can go and find the medicine in the forest. What they do is uh, they transform into a gorilla, and it's a gorilla who is going to find the medicine for them. I mean, it's so really interesting because I have never heard about this before. But this traditional doctor told me that before they get this medicine from the forest, they have to transform into a gorilla before they will find the medicine. And everybody in this village, nobody kills a gorilla because they know that people are in the gorillas. And if they saw a gorilla in the forest, the gorilla will not harm them, which is, I mean, it's so interesting what I'm hearing from him. The gorilla will not harm them because the gorilla is looking for the medicine that it will be treating the village. Bahama leaves the shaman feeling more optimistic. Just a few minutes later, while looking for food, he makes a staggering discovery. Madame, I just kind of meet this. Wow, mm -hmm. she's encouraging me to eat bush meat, but I just told her that I don't eat meat. She said bush meat is very nice, she loves it, and so many people love it. Even ministers, they eat bush meat. But I told her that I don't eat bush meat, I'm sorry. She's tried to encourage me that I should just taste a piece of it. I said, I can't taste it, I'm very sorry, please. I don't eat bush meat. Thank you. The cook has even worse news. She has not been selling gorilla meat or chimpanzee meat because in the forest, the, all the gorillas have been disappearing because in those days they were too much hunting them. So now she cannot see gorillas anymore. But that is the only thing she can say, the monkeys. Distressing as this is, Barma knows that hunting bushmeat is a harsh reality of life in Africa. Cameroon is still one of the poorest countries in the world. For generations, people have survived on food caught in the forest, but now this vital supply of meat is fast running out. In the little town of Manfi, Bama takes a break from his exhausting travels. Over breakfast, he reviews all the information he has collected so far on his mission to find the place where Niango started her life. Bama asks himself how he will react when he meets the man who was responsible for the death of Niango's mother. getting closer to his goal. This is the house of the hunter who killed her. For Barma, the emotional strain is almost unbearable. Outside, he meets the son of the hunter, his father has passed away, buried just in front of the entrance. He shows Barma a photograph. The son says he was there when his father killed Nyango's mother, and he has vivid memories of what happened to Nyango as a baby. Barma 
is shocked. We look the life for the animal will be like life for person. So anything will chop, it will must chop. He's telling me that he's, he went out hunting with his father. And his father actually shot Nyango's mother. And uh, after killing Nyango's mother, Nyango was unable to, to run because she was still quite small. But she was trying to climb up. And uh, so this man put Nyango in his back and uh, they brought Nyango's home. And uh, Nyango was tied down in this small pole and she was just lying around this small area. And I mean, the whole family was here looking at Nyango and Nyango was not happy because that is her first time to see people a lot like that. So Nyango was very stressed off, she was sick. Until one day, the Punches, a missionary family, discovered Nyango and bought her. They paid $40. Nyango was a surprise birthday present for the mother and quickly became one of the family. Nyango likes nannies. The Punches were just in time. Had they not rescued her, Niango might also have been killed and eaten by the villagers. Niango, baby! You so happy to see me? It was here that she acquired her name. Niango means mother in the local language. Where do you think we're going, you goof? You... To this day, Niango loves having her belly scratched. After three months, the punches brought Niango to the Limby Wildlife Center. Slowly, the young gorilla grew accustomed to the place and to Bama as her main carer. Over time, their friendship grew, leaving a lasting bond between them. Thanks to this unique friendship, Barma has made it his mission to find Nyango's relatives in the wild, and nothing will get in his way now, even when the roads become virtually impassable. Everyone is trying their best to get through somehow. Barma comes across some German travelers with an old fire truck who are also having problems. Further on, a cow herd gives him a valuable tip. He's heard of a white man who's trying to protect the gorillas, but he's still quite a way off. Deeper, Barma penetrates into the forest. After passing an old colonial bridge, the journey continues along a tributary of the Cross River, which marks the border between Cameroon and Nigeria. Today, Fewer than 300 Cross River gorillas remain in an area of about 12,000 square kilometers. But the gorillas' forest habitat continues to be fragmented. Human settlements are scattered throughout the forests where the gorillas live and the population of these villages is continually growing. Indeed, on the edges of these forests lie areas with some of the densest human populations in all of Africa. Nevertheless, there is hope. Even here, there are still patches of forest where wildlife can find refuge.
In the afternoon, fruit bats engage in their daily cleansing rituals. They are harmless vegetarians. They eat what the rainforest offers, nectar, pollen, flowers and fruit. At dusk, they become active and fly off in search of food. The mountain chameleon is as peaceful as it is bizarre, with its waveform sails above the base of the tail. Mountain chameleons are fairly common in some parts of Cameroon. Nevertheless, they're only to be found here and nowhere else in Africa. The group of red-capped mangabees is extremely large. The lighter patches in the fur act as signals and keep the troop together in the dim light of the rainforest. Up in the canopy, there are the lively Mona monkeys. With their dark eye markings, they resemble cartoon bank robbers. In the trees above, chimpanzees swing in the tangle of lianas. The name chimpanzee comes from the Bantu language and means mock man. Indeed, genetically, they are our closest living relatives. Unfortunately, we don't treat our relatives very well. Like gorillas, chimpanzees are also in great danger. Day by day, deforestation is destroying their habitats. One third of Cameroon is still covered in forest, but the rest is being wiped out at a rate of 1% a year. First, Western companies come and take the most valuable trees. Then the rest is burnt down and turned into fields. <laughs> Neighboring Nigeria is no different. The country's hunger for wood is insatiable, with only 3% of its own original forests still intact. Those not quick enough to escape the flames perish. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the highlands of Cameroon, Barma finds the white man the cowherd told him about. Aaron Nicholas works for the Wildlife Conservation Society and is leader of the Takamanda Moni Landscape Project. Barmer joins him on his journey into the mountains. If anyone knows where the Cross River gorillas are to be found, it's Aaron. For the first time, Barmer hears from a reliable source that Nyango's relatives aren't extinct. This is where we find the gorillas today. It's amazing to think that up until 1987-ish, uh, we thought these guys were extinct. Then in 2000, we arrived in sites like this and we still found gorillas here. This is one of only 11 major sites where the gorillas occur and probably one of the most important for us. Because we have a really good relationship with the local communities here, we've been able to get them involved with conservation. There's no gorilla hunting that takes place around these villages because of traditional beliefs. One of the things we do have to uh, deal with, unfortunately, is, is burning, uh, bush burning in the dry season, 
uh, is done by grazers basically to encourage the regrowth of grass. Um, and unfortunately, if it's done improperly, uh, the fire gets into the forest and pushes the forest back year by year. So that's why behind me you see this kind of mosaic of forest and grassland. That grassland is areas that have been burnt. After a short break, the journey into the mountains continues. The team are heading to a small research camp located on the edge of the Kagwane Gorilla Sanctuary. The first meal is of spaghetti and sardines. Barma gets to meet Emmanuel and Richard, his new gorilla guides. Outside, the heavens open to a tropical shower at the end of the dry season. The men agree. If they want to find Cross River gorillas, they have to set out soon. It won't be long before the rains make the mountains impassable. There's something eerie about the mist cloaking the landscape. A sign for Bama that the weeks to come aren't going to be easy. The next morning, a lesson in guerrilla studies from Richard. Really? <laughs> it frightens you. It frightens you. Then you just have to stay. Because when, when, when if a, a back, yeah. it says you don't stand, you go stop. But second time, when you can, you see, you go up, not just. After Richard's impressive performance, Barma can't wait to start searching the forest. I mean, these guys are going to show me those cross river gorilla, and uh, they were making the sign of the silver back between their chest. I mean, they make me so excited, and I'm really looking forward to see those cross river gorilla, and it makes me so happy. And right now, we are going to see them. Let's go, man. So, are you really excited to see gorilla? I'm very excited. Are to you see sure them. you see them? Yeah. Now, we'll carry you to the field. Thank Let's you. go now. Let's go. Thank you, man. Leaving the camp, they begin a long and exhausting ascent. The first chance of a break only comes some hours later. Then the men plunge into the heart of Caguene, untouched and almost impenetrable rainforest. Richard and Emmanuel, the experienced trackers, dictate the pace, with Barma bringing up the rear. Every sound they hear above is registered, along with every cracking noise in the undergrowth. The pair have many years of experience. You hear? Yeah. A false alarm. The men weren't fooled though, knowing as they do the behavior of each species. Emmanuel has been a tracker since his youth, having been the best hunter in his village. He then changed sides. He no longer fights against the animals, but for them, especially gorillas, to the point of exhaustion. We are sitting here, we are very tired because we have walked for so many kilometers, expecting that we will see gorilla nests, and uh, when we see their nests, we'll be sure they are very close. But in the fact that we have walked for so many kilometers, we haven't seen any sign of their nest. We show that we still have a long way to climb this place before we might see them making their nests or we'll see them feeding. So right now we don't know where they are now. 
but we want to just rest a little bit because we are really tired. The search turns out to be harder than he thought, and each day pushes Barma closer to the limit. Physical pain becomes an ever stronger enemy of his initial euphoria, but his will remains unbroken. Then finally, after nearly three weeks, fresh signs of feeding. The branch is too light for them to climb and harvest the fruit, so they have to break the branch closer to them, then harvest the fruits. Okay. They hear a sound. The tension rises. A silverback barks a warning. He drums his chest to demonstrate his strength. For a fraction of a second, he shows himself. Then silence once more. Although the sighting was extremely brief, Barma is overjoyed. For my three weeks looking for this cross river gorilla, I mean, today is one of my luckiest days that I saw the cross river gorilla very close to me. I mean, in my mind, it's a lot of joy, and uh, I would like to go back and tell Nyango that she's not the only one. She still has her family in the forest. How should the team proceed? Mm -hmm. They decide to take a short break. Richard makes suggestions, while Emmanuel is as ever tight-lipped. I mean, we don't work a lot. We don't feel you get that lucky for sitting. The next day, Bahama is invited to attend a traditional blessing by the people from the nearby village of Kenshi. Every year, they give thanks to the gorillas, who they believe are ancestors. The ceremony pays homage to the gorillas and is accompanied by animal sacrifice and a sumptuous meal. Barma learns how the traditional beliefs of the Kenchi people have safeguarded the gorillas. It is taboo to hunt or eat them, and consequently, the Kenchi have protected them for generations. But without this you in this village, this Village, that, you can the village that you started protecting this gorilla. Yes. I mean, we will never see the gorillas. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm really proud of you because we are now protecting this gorilla. But because of you, we know that gorillas are still living. Yes. So I'm really proud of you and I'm proud of the tradition. For the first time, the people of Kenshi are profiting from their beliefs and customs. Many of the men have found work as porters and guides in the Conservation Society's camp, often leaving the women and children to themselves. <laughs> Barma and his friends, meanwhile, are struggling on. And they cross to the other side of the forest. So now we have to walk up this forest, then we cross before we start follow the track again. Barma's greatest wish is to see the gorillas again, a little closer. Emmanuel and Richard follow the gorilla feeding signs with great skill. Eventually, they lead to a fig tree. The team speculate whether the gorillas have passed this way. So yesterday they were, this is the fig tree. 
So it's just because they hate us, though, that's why they just pass without feeding. So they were supposed to feed here yesterday, just because of they saw us, so they were really scared of us. So that's why they passed through this fake fruit, because this is one of their best fruits that they also really feed on. But just because of us, so they decided to just pass without feeding here. It's a lot of ants here all on my body. Jesus. They are biting very serious. But ants won't stop him. The men sense that they are now close to the gorillas. Shortly afterwards comes the confirmation they're seeking. Richard takes a closer look at the droppings, which contain information about the gorilla's diet. And suddenly, the team spots something in the trees above. This is the moment Bama has been waiting for. Two female gorillas are sitting quietly in a tree, enjoying the surrounding fruit. Never before have Cross River gorillas been filmed feeding in the wild. These are the very first pictures. Obama is ecstatic. If you come inside my heart, you will see a lot of joy because, I mean, for all my time spending to see only these cross river gorillas, before my mind will be pleased. And right now, I'm telling you, my mind is so happy because I have seen the cross river gorillas on top of the tree feeding. And nobody believed that these cross river gorillas they are living. So can you imagine that I saw them today? I mean, in my heart, there's a lot of joy, and I'm proud that Nyango still have her family in this forest. So that was the most happiest day I have never had in my life because I never believed I could see Nyango's family. So that is the greatest news I have for you. So, and I will wonder when you go home, tell your family, tell your neighbors that we need to do something to help these gorillas, to protect them. Otherwise, we will never see these gorillas again. So, Thank you for coming. Back at the Limbi Wildlife Center, inseparable friends for 15 years, Bama and Nyango, have a lot of catching up to do. Nyango make me, I love a lot because she's so beautiful. I don't want to miss her. That's why I spend all my time to look for her family because she's so in love with me. She's very nice. If she could understand me, then I would marry Nyango. <laughs> So, but serious, we have to do something for this country. Otherwise, this beautiful species of this gorilla will lose them all. Serious. And when I see Nyango, I nearly cry because I never knew the family that still remaining in the forest. 
There are now fewer than 300 Cross River gorillas remaining in the wild. If current trends continue, they could become extinct in the next few years. Barma is determined to do whatever it takes to protect his precious gorillas before it's too late. Simba.